you know, disruptive thinking. Uh, we are seeing that it brings two things. Number mm. one, it kills the whole system, mm. and then introduces us to new opportunities mm. that are coming with the new things. Mm. But the old leader will say, you know what, uh, why should I disrupt what I what I created? Mm. You know, let's look at the QWERTY keyboard, mm. the BlackBerry. That's right. Mm. Look at Nokia, mm. uh, look at Xerox. Mm. Now, those are big names in the old. Mm. Now, they're no longer there. They're still there, but they're no longer doing business as they used to do. But how does someone young as I am come and say, okay, I'm the new CEO, how do I disrupt mm. in my thinking? I think the reminder to all of us has to be that, um, so disruptive thinking is an input, it's not an outcome. Mm -hmm. And I think the mistake people make is the presumption that disruptive thinking is what results. Okay. Disruptive thinking is what germinates. So if you're disruptive in the way you think about the world, then the outcome will be disruption. But let me take you back. So the QWERTY keyboard wasn't actually designed by any of the mobile telecommunications companies. It was designed by Remington Rand, the world's first typewriter company. What Nokia, and then many years later Blackberry did, is they miniaturized the QWERTY keyboard with a design philosophy that the finger on the thumb should reach every, s the thumb on the hand rather, should reach every single key on the keyboard without moving the phone away from the palm. That was the basic design philosophy. And that design philosophy was disruptive because nobody had done that before. Fast forward a decade, Steve Jobs then says, but why does the phone need a keyboard in the first place? So the point I make here is what people think about as the outcome, which is the swish of the phone, is the outcome. That's the disruption. Disruption as a thinking model is the input. In other words, you need the courageous leader to go, why don't we do it differently? The question you asked is, but why? The answer is actually very simple. All businesses die. All businesses die. You can read the Bible cover to cover and you will not find anywhere on any of the Holy Scriptures where the creator of the heavens and the earth decrees your business to exist. So what that means is there was a point in time where somebody thought about your business. It was an idea and they took that idea, ran with it and they built the business. Now, if something can be created, it can and must be destroyed. This is the natural cycle of the world, right? Things come and go. There was a time the British were the most powerful empire in the world. There was a time the Spaniards were. There was a time the Romans were. There was a time the, Carthag the, Carthag the Carthagians were. So th the, the point about it is everything dies. That's the point. What you want to look for as a business leader is the opportunity to kill yourself. The reason you want to do that is because you don't want the market doing it. The answer to why is very simple. If the market destroys you, it's brutal. It's, it's not going to, it, it doesn't ask for your participation. It certainly doesn't need your permission. It's going to destroy you. Whereas if you drive the process of disruption, you drive the process of change, you're in charge. You can dictate the rate at which that change should happen. You can dictate the rate at which that change gets implemented and you can dictate what that change means to you. So you want to be the one driving the disruption because if you're the one driving the disruption, trust me, it's a far better seat in the cinema of life than being the one receiving the disruption happening in the marketplace.